The Anaim begins with a narrative. A long time ago, the planet was nearly destroyed by an onslaught from a powerful entity known as the Demon Lord. Then came the warrior known as the Mythical Hero. They appear to save the planet and restore peace as it once existed. At the time, humans became powerful monsters because they possessed magic and sought the hero's legacies. Then there's Reiner, a man with the uncommon Alpha Stigma eyes. His power may absorb and utilize the power of its opponent. He was on the boundary between the Roland Kingdom and the Nelfa Kingdom. The Nelfa Kingdom's border guards were astonished to witness Reiner's Alpha Stigma power. They even labeled him a monster. The unit leader instructed his troops not to use magic, because he will absorb the energy and give it back to them. The Nelfa Royal Army regarded Reiner as a Roland Kingdom spy. They implored Reiner not to come forward since it was a portent of impending conflict between the two kingdoms. Reiner's partner, Ferris, appeared unexpectedly, but she mocked him since he resembles a spy. His visage, she said, was unsuitable for spying. Then with her beauty, Ferris requested a quiet path to enter the border. However, the troops promptly attacked them, leaving her little choice except to fight back. Then they battled, and she won. Seeing her power, they all ran across the border. Reiner's aim in meeting the troops was to find out where the hero's spoils were in the Nelfa Kingdom. Ferris, on the other hand, immediately punches Reiner because it was a secret assignment that she did not want anybody else to know about. They finally continue their trek. On the other hand, it turned out that there was a group watching Reiner and Ferris' actions. Even Ferris, who was eating Dango, did not want to be disturbed while they were resting. Despite her intimidating appearance, she is simply a guard hired to assist Reiner in accomplishing his goal to locate the treasures of heroes in the Nelfa Kingdom. The mission was commissioned by Shigen Astel, a hero monarch who brought about a revolutionary transformation. For some, he was a decent man, smart, and attractive. However, Reiner and Ferris saw him as a devil. Ferris claimed Cyan deceived her into giving her Dango's meal in exchange for accompanying Reiner on his quest. According to Reiner, Cyan was a workaholic who even instructed him to carry out this bizarre job. Then they both shook hands as they believed they were in the same situation. Shan walks around the city on the other side of the Roland Kingdom. The locals also appeared to applaud joyously as he arrived since his presence had improved their lives. They shouted and referred to him as the Hero King. From beyond the walls of a structure, it looks that a mystery man named Renaran is watching them. Shan arrived in his dominion and opened the big door. Callan and Miller greeted him. They inquired about the current condition in the Cellular region. Shan also requested that Callan amend the budget promptly, as she was in charge of domestic matters. Then Shan inquired about military issues and the situation in the frontier region. He asked Duke Sterled and Count Clausbear to make a significant move. Then he questioned Cloth about state security and the state of his neighboring kingdom. Miller informed him that Reiner and Ferris were currently amid the ruins of the frontier treasure of the Nelfa kingdom, but he remained mute because he was concerned for them. Reiner and Ferris, on the other hand, discovered a big door that had been magically locked. Reiner claimed that the door was tough to open, but Ferris did so with ease using her sword. Meanwhile, the strange group was still following them, peering out from behind the tree before following them into the building. When Ferris and Reiner entered the building, Reiner used his abilities to observe the situation within. He stated that there were numerous traps throughout the building. However, one of the strange persons accidentally activated the trap mode and he was nearly impaled by the iron that appeared from the left and right walls. Then one of the women in the group appeared to care about Reiner and approached him to offer assistance. However, another trap emerged in the form of a powerful water flow. Ferris escaped by clinging onto the spear stuck in the wall while Reiner was carried away by the current. The woman instantly assisted Reiner. Then they became acquainted. Her name was Captain Milk Callad, and she led the Roland Kingdom trespassing squad. She wanted to catch him for utilizing magic in the Borderlands, but Reiner and Ferris ignored Captain Milk and abandoned her. She became enraged instantly and used her magic to strike them. Reiner can likewise readily withstand her strikes. Then a light flew towards the top of the wall, transforming into a monster resembling a Gundam robot. Ferris and Reiner instantly attacked the beast, but it was too powerful. They both chose to flee and hide until they learned the monster was a relic of the hero. Then from behind the wall appeared a man named Vile. He is seeking for the nobility who stole his little sister, Eslina. Instead, he attacked the King of Cyan. Claw, upon witnessing the situation, quickly assaulted Vile back. When he falls due to an attack by Claw, he demands to be slain, because he cannot live without his sister. Cyan, who overheard this, encouraged Vile and offered to help. They traveled to the Clawspear nobles and Eslina was eventually discovered. He wanted to aid Vile because he disliked nobles. In the past, aristocrats dominated and frequently oppressed the weak, including him. Cheyenne describes his terrible childhood. At the time, a bunch of noble children beat him as a kind of bullying. 
He had solely lived with his mother from childhood until she passed away due to illness. Since then, he has been brought to the Special Military Academy of Roland Nobles, which invites orphans and children of high-profile offenders to join the fight. They were trained to serve as the Roland Kingdom's military front guard. Shine grew up and had numerous academic successes, therefore he was picked as the troop group's leader. He learned that there was a remarkable pupil named Reiner who possessed the Alpha Stigma talent. He was also interested in recruiting Reiner for his army. The next day, while Sion was performing academy training on the field, he noticed Reiner using his strength. But at the time, Reiner was tormented by other classmates, since he was seen as the most useless and weak student. Even against a lady he lost, Reiner has only one female buddy, Kiefer. She forced him to constantly work out to get stronger. After Reiner and Kiefer had done practicing, Shine approached them in the middle of the field. Shine invites Kiefer to join his squad, and Reiner pushes her to accept the offer. Then Shine offers Reiner to participate, but he declines, preferring to relax rather than fight on the battlefield with Shine's team. He quickly revealed Reiner's past and stated that he knew Reiner possessed the power of Alpha Stigma. He threatens to divulge this information to everyone in order to coerce Reiner into joining his side. Their first mission starts. Cheyenne led them to Gorilla in order to capture the enemy, after which he created a strategy that involved constructing a trap. Eventually, their objective was successful. After that, they went out to drink. They appear to be acquainted now. Cheyenne tells Reiner that he despises the school system since it appears decent just because it takes care of orphans. However, they will all be sold and converted into war slaves to look after the noble people. That means the orphans were utilized as war victims, which is why Cyan despises the academy system. Cheyenne invites Reiner to exact revenge, destroy the kingdom, and bring an end to this war era. He intended to become king in order to bring peace to the kingdom and defend the common people from all forms of persecution. Reiner also agreed as long as the country remained tranquil and he could have a pleasant snooze without interruption. Suddenly, a troop of black-robed magicians attacked them. Cheyenne knew they were chasing him and told Reiner to go. When he tries to flee from them, he runs into a dead end. When he thought he would die there, Ferris appeared to assist him. Ferris stated that she received a duty from her brother to protect her domain against illegal activity. She effortlessly slaughtered the gang of wizards, while some tried to flee. Then she clarified that her assistance was not free. Cheyenne had to pay with Dango, which had been delivered to her house. The next day, when Cyan carried the food to Ferris' house, he was startled to learn that Ferris was a respectable Sword Clan family member, but she wanted to assist him. When they met, she said that her older brother had requested her to look over Cyan, even though she didn't understand why. She was also intrigued about why so many people were after him. Cheyenne also stated that his mother was a commoner and his father was a famous aristocrat. However, his father ignored his existence since boyhood and was driven from the kingdom, since he was humiliated to have a son from a commoner. Ferris also stated that she would keep Shine for a while because it was her responsibility. She also told Renner that starting tomorrow, she would invite her younger sister, Irish, to accompany her. Shine was instructed to prepare a double portion of Dango. The next day, a war notification was delivered to the military headquarters. The Estable Kingdom assaulted their kingdom. Roland's royal warriors instructed them to prepare for war on the front lines. Kiefer was concerned about losing Reiner since he was deemed weak. She asked Reiner to flee the academy to escape fighting in the conflict. Ferris and Irish, on the other hand, were taking action. They asked Noble Bross if he had authorized Cyan's arrest. When he refused to respond, Irish would douse him in hot water and puncture his foot with a nail to force him to speak. Then he admitted that he was pursuing Cyan. He claimed that approximately 50 Magic Knights of Estable were dispatched to the plains of Roxen to capture Cyan. There were spies among Cyan's buddies. It is because Cyan possesses the blood of an heir to the throne. Then came Ferris brother, who slipped the necks of the aristocratic broths. At the moment, her brother explained that Cyan was the true successor to the Roland Kingdom. Meanwhile, Cyan and his men were already on the battlefield preparing their supplies. They were already at the border area off Estable, erecting their tents. Then there was a student named Tayhill who was hunting for water. Meanwhile, Kiefer, still restless, requested Reiner to flee again. There, she also declared her love for him. When he believed it was a joke, she became enraged, performed her magic, and departed. While Reiner was standing, Tehill's body was cut in half and appeared to have been hurled. It turned revealed to be the result of the Estable Knight's magic. Reiner's buddies were mercilessly killed one by one. Cyan, who is aware of this, orders them to flee immediately while he and Reiner save the rest of the squad, including Kiefer. Reiner then attacks using Alpha Stigma techniques. When the adversary attacks Cyan, Reiner quickly blocked it with his strength. Shine became enraged and wondered why he hadn't used his ability from the start. 
But, as they were arguing, the leader of the Estable Kingdom's knights emerged and surrounded them. When they discovered Reiner had the Alpha Stigma talent, they postponed the plan to assassinate Shan. Because they are intrigued by Alpha Stigma's ability, which has been dubbed the cursed power of a creature as powerful as a god. However, Kiefer appears to have survived. She and Shyan are currently being kept captive by their soldiers. The knight leader prompted Reiner to use his Alpha Stigma power. They immediately tormented Shyan and planned to rape Kiefer in front of him. Reiner eventually became enraged and used his talent to murder Estable's entire army of knights on his own. He was out of control and wanted to kill both Cyan and Kiefer. Cyan used all his might to restore Reiner's consciousness. He was also able to stop Reiner by closing his eyes. It wasn't long until Roland's warriors came. After that, Cyan was greeted heartily as a battle hero, despite the aristocrat's displeasure. However, Reiner and Kiefer are in prison instead. Reiner was tortured in prison because he believed the Roland nobles were responsible for Cyan's death. In addition, he is thought to have foiled their assassination plot. Because Reiner was aware that Shyam was the heir to the Roland Kingdom, the nobility used Kiefer as a puppet to trap Shan. This suggests Kiefer is the hidden spy among Shyam's friends. As a result, Reiner was condemned to two years in prison, and then executed. However, royal officials informed Reiner that the monarch granted him one last wish before being executed. He also requested them to release Kiefer. Then she regretted betraying everyone. As a result, she killed all of the other students along the border. Despite this, she genuinely loves him. The next day, Shan pays Reiner a visit and gives him a tool for escaping prison. But Reiner was content in prison because he didn't have to fight and was able to take lengthy naps. They are each living their different lives but share the same dream. A world free of war. Shyan continued to dream. Fortunately, fate stood with him. Then he visited the Eris family's home and met Farah's older brother, Lucile. He had a crucial role in creating the kingdom. Shyan's encounter with Lucile transformed his life. While Reiner's time in prison wasn't particularly awful, he continues to write about his ideal of a peaceful world without violence collecting hero weaponry from all across the world in a book. Long story short, two years had passed and it was time for Reiner to be executed. Ferris happened to be the one who scooped him up by accident. They were strangers at the moment. Reiner then attempted to flee by attacking her with Izuchi's strength, but she was powerful enough to resist him. So they fight and assault each other. Unfortunately, Ferris utilized a Sword Knight technique, which prevented Reiner from absorbing magical power. This causes him to lose and he surrenders for execution. Reiner was bewildered because he was supposed to be executed, yet Ferris took him to the king's palace. When they got at the palace, he was surprised and perplexed to see Cheyenne seated on King Roland's throne. Reiner didn't care because he just wanted to sleep and relax. Shan then informed her that Kiefer was still alive and that she was safe. He also stated that he had read Reiner's books while in prison, he was captivated by the book and assigned Reiner, a task to complete the book's writings with Ferris. Then Shyan completed telling Claw about his past. Reiner and Ferris, on the other hand, had to continue their search for the hero's spoils as directed by Shyan. When they got in Nelfa City, he took a nap in the middle of the street. He requested Ferris to find an inn so he could rest and sleep. However, she refused since she was terrified to be alone in the room with him. The two visited a Nelfa Royal Library in search of clues concerning the hero's legacy. But just as they were ready to enter, Reiner saw a small ruckus. He instantly went to the source of the commotion and assisted people being tormented by a thug. Toll expressed gratitude to Reiner for his assistance. Fortunately, Toll was frequently in the library, so he could question him about it. Reiner, the indolent one, also requested Toll's assistance in retrieving the book. But the librarian's grandfather was furious because Toll was the grandson of Great Nelfi, king of the Nelfa kingdom. Reiner ignored the old man's instructions and urged Cole to get the book. Seeing this, the librarian's grandfather became increasingly enraged. However, Toll stated that it made no difference because this was his way of thanking Reiner for his assistance before. It was explained that Toll was the king's grandson, but his mother was a commoner, thus he was wasted. Then he decided to live a simple life. The old man believed that Toll, rather than King Starnel or Toll's father, was better suited to being king. Reiner glanced at him and said his life narrative was identical to Cyan's. Cyan, on the other hand, is so preoccupied with maintaining his dominion that he neglects himself and does not have time to eat. Fortunately, Vile was always watching him because he had been appointed as the king's personal assistant. Vile was also grateful to have a benevolent monarch like Cyan, because if he had met Cyan, he could have killed himself, leaving his sister in the clutches of that cruel nobility. When he was still a humble citizen, Vile lamented that he didn't deserve to be joyful. Cyan, upon hearing this, quickly refuted it, stating that a human being's happiness should not be determined by their social station. 
He was much more proud of Cheyenne, a monarch who treated all people equally. Viol claims that there will be a dancing party tonight. Then Cheyenne offered him the day off so he could meet Aslina. In the evening, Zion appeared to be at a ball in the reception hall. He was anxious and did not enjoy the dance party. He despises numerous anti-supporting factions. They approached him who was standing alone. Claw, however, appeared unexpectedly to inform him that Viol had been killed. The nobility who heard this didn't appear to care because the only person who died was Viol, a commoner, and it wasn't necessary to examine his death. Cyan, upon hearing this, suppressed his rage and refused to retaliate rashly against their insults. Cheyenne went straight to the site where Viol died. When he saw Viol's body, he was devastated and blamed himself for the incident, hitting the wall until his hand was wounded. Claw quickly stopped him. There he discovered a letter written by Viol to Eslina. The letter stated that Viol was grateful to have such a good king. In that palace, he was treated equally with everyone else. He also stated that Cheyenne was a smart monarch. Cyan then orders Claw to safeguard Eslina's safety before the nobility discover her. While Cyan was strolling, Lucile approached and volunteered to help kill the nobility. But he rejected since he felt it was not the appropriate time. Ferris and Reiner, on the other hand, were at Toll's place for dinner with some young children. Suddenly, the Irish arrived to meet them. She explained that her arrival was an instruction from Cyan to serve as a communication conduit between them on this assignment. Cyan received a report from the nobles on their proposal for the kingdom. They intended to pay a visit to their neighboring kingdom, Nelfa Kingdom, to introduce the new monarch. Cheyenne approved the idea for consideration. After they left, Clove advised Cheyenne not to attend the event, because he believes the event may be a trap for the anti-kingdom faction, because they dared to assault a monarch while he was outside his domain. When Cheyenne and Clove entered Cheyenne's chamber, a man named Moran was waiting for him. He introduced himself as the son of a nobility, Marcus Karl Frode. He is presently serving as a lieutenant colonel in the Rollin Kingdom's military. He apologized that his arrival was impolite, since he wanted to speak quietly with Cheyenne. Moran proposed that Cheyenne invade neighboring kingdoms so that the Rollin Kingdoms might could grow. But he stated he wanted a kingdom without war, therefore he rejected the plan. Moran continued to gently press Cheyenne, saying that a king must be capable of both glory and darkness. He then begged Cheyenne to appoint him his assistant. Moran also stated that if Cheyenne ever needed battle, he would willingly give his allegiance to defend the Roland Kingdom. Although this contradicts Cyan's dream, he recognizes that there is always a negative side that must be sacrificed when making a decision. He then takes Moran as an assistant. The next day, Irish informs Cyan that Reiner and Ferris had met and become acquainted with Toll, the grandson of the King of Nelfa. They are currently living in Toll's house. After that, Cyan met with various royals including Moran to consider the proposition he had received. He requests for feedback on his tour to the Nelfa Kingdom. Clove objected to the visit because he believed Cheyenne may have been killed there and all to be over. He was concerned about the king's safety, and it was possible that the nobility were setting up a trap. Moran also provides his military perspective. He believes that Cyan's departure from his country would be extremely hazardous. However, that occurrence allowed them to glimpse the kingdom's opponents including anti-king faction groups. At that location, Cheyenne might also trap them all. Moran and Claw then got into an altercation, because Claw still disagrees on whether Cyan should quit the kingdom. But Moran boldly stated that as a lieutenant colonel, he would assure the king's safety if he was permitted to accompany Cyan to the Nelfa kingdom. They all disagree since Moran is a new person, and they don't trust him yet. Claw stated that even Moran could have killed Cyan there, so he wanted to accompany Cyan on his tour to the Nelfa kingdom. Cyan unexpectedly decided that they all couldn't come. You will only travel to the Nelfa Kingdom alone with Moran. Long story short, Cheyenne and Moran travel to the Nelfa Kingdom together. When they arrived, the King of Nelfa, Gred Nelfi, hailed them. Cheyenne then suggested to the King of Nelfa to become an ally of the Roland Kingdom. The King of Nelfa initially consented, but then a guy came along and ruined the agreement. He was King Starnel, Toll's father. He appeared to underestimate Cheyenne due to his young age. King Nelfa quickly apologized for his insulting treatment of Cheyenne and he stated that you will still organize a welcome ceremony for Cyan tonight. Following that, Miran launches an investigation. He learns from his subordinates that the nobles and Starnel are hatching sinister intentions. He was instructed to remain vigilant and conduct a comprehensive inquiry with his colleagues. Meanwhile, Cheyenne informed Miran that he would meet someone in Nelfa's area. Cyan goes to Toll's residence to meet Reiner and Ferris. He met them in private and pretended to be someone other than himself. Reiner's recklessness nearly revealed Cyan's true identity to Toll. Cyan stated that he came there to ask for their assistance during his welcome ceremony tonight in the Nelfa Kingdom because many people wanted to kill him. When the night approached, it became clear that many people were after Cyan. 
Fortunately, Ferris and Reiner were already prepared to conduct remote surveillance. While Moran is traced, King Starnal is the mastermind behind all of these activities. Because the King of Nelfa wishes Toll to inherit his kingdom's throne, rather than Starnal. Shia knew this and instructed Moran to slaughter all of the nobility and royal descendants implicated. Moran then went ahead and slaughtered the nobility with ease. He wanted to finish off Toll at the time, but instead he ran across Ferris and Reiner. He assumed Reiner was Toll. They don't know each other. Thus, they think they're enemies despite being from the same kingdom. Moran used his might to assault Reiner, but Ferris was able to block it with her blade. However, Reiner's Alpha Stigma power was unable to detect Moran's magic. When Reiner unleashed his strength, Moran was surprised to learn that he could wield the power of multiple kingdoms. Ferris' strength is likewise not to be ignored. Moran, seeing his opponent's might, swiftly unleash all of his own, badly injuring Ferris. When Reiner transforms into a monster, he discovers that he possesses rare magic in the form of shadow magic, which originates from a ring. Interestingly, Ferris and Reiner had an argument despite arguing. Finally, Moran abandoned his plan to kill Toll. On the other hand, Claw was informing Shine about his inquiry into Moran. He claimed he could not find any information on Moran before he was adopted by Duke Frode. He also criticized Moran's attitude, which had resulted in the slaughter of the aristocrats and was regarded as excessive. He had no idea Cheyenne was the one who had dispatched Moran. Moran suddenly entered Siam's room while Claw was still present. Cloth instantly fled because he did not appear to like him. Moran then reported to Cyan that he had encountered two persons who were strong enough to murder Toll. Cheyenne was also aware that Moran was referring to Ferris and Reiner, but he chose not to inform him. He still values Moran's services. He further stated that he was prepared to carry out any orders from Cyan. As a result, Cheyenne begins to question why Moran wants to serve him. Cheyenne later expressed regret for massacring the lords of Nelfa. Even he unintentionally provoked Moran to fight Ferris and Reiner. This implies he nearly killed Ferris and Reiner, but Ferris merely sustained injuries and is now recovering thanks to Reiner's therapy. Ferris and Reiner, on the other hand, were taking a stroll through Nelfa land. Ferris believed Reiner was a wonderful person. Thus, she was no longer fierce with him. They also continue their journey to find the hero's valuables. Then Reiner and Ferris headed for the Nelfa Kingdom's fortress. They effortlessly slaughtered the guard forces in search of the hero's spoils, which corresponded to the clues on the map. Unfortunately, they found nothing. There were only files and two people they deemed unimportant. When Reiner checked the map again, he discovered that they were the incorrect cardinals. The place they were looking for was outside the fort, near the forest. Then Ferris discovered someone was listening in on their talk. They turned out to be a pair of sisters and brothers known as the Sui siblings. They admit that they are simply thugs gathering secondhand stuff to market, with the proceeds going toward extra wedding expenses. Reiner and Ferris simply stared at them, not suspecting them. They even allowed the Sui siblings to check the historical objects there. On the other side, Captain Milk is still searching for Reiner's location. She was remembering about her gloomy background at the time of noble persecution. Everyone she loved had been slaughtered, so she was forced to live alone in an orphanage. She couldn't help but be a slave to the kingdom, and she resolved to commit herself since she couldn't bear her agony. At that point, little Reiner emerged and saved her, giving her the strength to keep fighting for her life. That was why Captain Milk was after him now. Following that, the Sui siblings visited Captain Milk's room. They said that two suspicious individuals had stormed her fortress. She concluded they must be Reiner and Ferris. Captain Milk and her troops quickly plan a plot to apprehend Reiner. Her purpose is to keep Reiner away from Ferris, who treats him cruelly. Then she will take Ferris' position and get to know Reiner, because she adores him. They were able to easily repel Captain Milk and her group's ambush, however. When Captain Milk is tied up in a tree, she yells at Reiner, claiming that she is the woman he helped at the orphanage. But he didn't recall or recognize her, so they both went on their way and abandoned her. After a lengthy hike, Reiner dug the dirt to discover the hero's wealth. While digging a hole, he was perplexed as to why he was being pursued by a group of royal trespassers and why Cyan had permitted it. Ferris further adds that her purpose is covered so that no one, including Captain Milk, is aware of it. After digging deeper, Reiner discovered a sword left by the hero. However, when he checked the blade with his Alpha Stigma, he had no idea how powerful it was. Shortly later, Nelfa Territorial Guard troops appeared where Reiner was. Captain Milk, who spotted the patrol troops approaching, instantly shouted to distract them. As a result, the patrol troops rushed at her. Fortunately, Reiner and Ferris arrived to save Captain Milk's troop. Due to the large number of troops, Ferris ordered Reiner to use the hero's sword against them. Unfortunately, he was unable to wield the sword's full potential. He accidentally stabbed the blade into the earth. 
The sword then reacted, transforming into a massive dragon monster that destroyed all of the opposing warriors. Ferris and Reiner abandoned the dragon monster because they were aware of its strength. Even though a hero had left a sword, sometimes their behavior was foolish and outrageous. Stein, on the other hand, continues to lament Vile's death. He goes to Vile's grave and pledges to murder the aristocracy. He arrives there with the admirals and Eslina. Eslina burst into sobs the moment she saw her brother's grave. Cheyenne saw this and concluded that he had failed to become king, but she firmly stated that it was all fate. Eslina then volunteered to serve Cheyenne instead of Vile. Then they departed the graveyard. Then Moran arrived to notify him that the nobles of Estable, who were vassals of the kingdom in the east, were rebelling. He also directed Moran to collect the nobles of Estable and officials from neighboring kingdoms in the palace. After they had assembled in Roland's palace, Cheyenne sought counsel on how to quell the rebellion in his realm. One of the other royal officials said that the rebellion was sparked by his lack of firm leadership. Moran also defended Cyan and offered to guard each territory while suppressing the uprising. However, he rejected and preferred Cloth to overcome this. Moran did not accept his decision. He also questioned why Cyan picked Cloth. Cyan understood Moran had planned everything and fostered a mutiny among the interested parties. He wisely asked Moran not to interfere with the insurrection. In the same moment, in the forefront of Estable's nobles stood now the queen who would lead the rebellion. Actually, she did not support the uprising because many people could have died fighting the Roland Kingdom. However, a female assistant named Sawell persuades Queen Nao to continue the revolt so that their realm might be free of the Roland realm's restraints. She took Sawell's suggestion and stated that their country will fight alongside the Roland country. Long story short, the war will start. The two kingdoms dispatch armies to their respective boundaries, Admiral Claude leads the Roland Kingdom. They all end up attacking one another. With the assistance of more forces, the Roland Kingdom was able to defeat all of Estable's troops. Then, after reading a letter from the Estable commander, Claude became extremely enraged. The message stated that if the Roland Kingdom fought back, they would execute their prisoners at Estable. However, Queen Nao was unaware that there were Roland Kingdom prisoners in her palace due to Sawell's actions. Finally, she discovered that her power was being used only by Sawell. A sudden attack was launched on Queen Nao's palace. The prisoners were disappointed because Claude did not consider their lives. Moran, however, was the one who showed there. Moran slaughtered Estable's entire army without Cheyenne's orders. It is finally discovered that Sawa planned the insurrection. She purposely governed under the name Queen Nao. After the uprising broke out, she planned to assassinate Queen Nao in order to rise to power in Estable. Unfortunately, Moran arrived just as Sawa was ready to kill Queen Nao and killed her. Despite the fact that Moran is the mastermind behind everything, Sawell is merely his puppet in his quest for supremacy in Estable. Then he wanted to kill Queen Nao to put a stop to the revolt. Then Claw appeared and stopped Moran, resulting in a confrontation between them. Queen Nao quickly halted their struggle and vowed on behalf of the Queen of Estable that she would instruct her subjects not to rebel and to obey the Roland Kingdom. They finally agreed, and the war ended. Cyan, who was in the palace, was concerned about the ongoing fight. He felt sorry about the deaths in the Estable and Roland Kingdoms. Then he blames Moran, claiming that the conflict would not have happened if there had not been a rebellion. Soon, Irish arrived to tell that Ferris and Reiner had recovered the hero's treasure in the form of a sword. Then Miller reported that a gigantic dragon monster came near the Nelfa border, resulting in numerous casualties. When Cheyenne heard the story, he immediately instructed Irish to deliver a letter to Ferris and Reiner. Irish's power allowed her to quickly reach Ferris and deliver Cyan's message. But when Irish arrived, Ferris urged her to relax and she knew Irish had brought her favorite Dango, which she wanted to eat alone. While looking for Dango's box, she threw the letter away by accident. When Irish awoke, she immediately searched her bag for a note from Cyan, but it was missing. Reiner inquired about the letter's contents. However, she forgot and simply remembered that a dragon was rampaging. Ferris and Reiner assumed the dragon in the letter was the beast they encountered yesterday. They were finally obliged to return to the forest to confront the dragon. However, the contents of the letter were orders to retreat rather than continue searching for the hero's wealth. Cheyenne did not want dragons to be killed for this task because they were extremely deadly. However, they misconstrued the command due to Ferris negligence. When they arrived in the jungle, they were surprised to see so many dead around. They also met the Sui siblings, who stated that they were simply on a walk to enjoy the countryside. But Ferris couldn't believe it since she saw them carrying the hero's sword she had found the day before. Finally, the Sui siblings explain that they have been following Reiner and Ferris since the beginning because they have the same goal, to recover the hero's wealth. They also claim Reiner was dumb for tossing away the hero's sword and being unable to control it. 
The Sui siblings purposefully killed all of the locals in order to keep the location of the hero's sword a secret. That they both fought. When the Sui siblings battle, they discover that Reiner is an Alpha Stigma user. After that, they both wanted to steal his eye. The Sui siblings arrogantly showed Reiner how to handle the hero's sword and then assaulted him. However, Reiner and Ferris discover treasures left by other heroes such as Green Spiritual Field Crystals, Ali Kronoku's Sickle, and Elamino's Comb, which acts to counteract magic. Ferris and Reiner eventually decided to flee because they felt they would have problems dealing with the hero's sword. Reiner's progress was halted when the Sui siblings released a spiritual crystal, which responded to his eyes causing him anguish. Reiner was enraged and unleashed his alpha stigma till he lost control of it. Even his strength may reduce the Sui siblings' hands to ashes. Reiner, who couldn't stop himself, even attacked Ferris, gravely injuring her. She didn't give up attempting to resuscitate him since she understood he wasn't a monster, but rather, her best friend. Then Ferris' earnest cry brought him back to his senses. Reiner woke up and immediately regretted his actions, crying because he had almost killed Ferris. She also hugged him warmly and complimented him on his good qualities. She assumed he wouldn't kill her because he wasn't a monster. Her words made him cry since he had never heard Ferris speak so truly before. Reiner informed Cyan after the incident that they had fought the Sui siblings, who had stolen their hero's riches. They shared the same mission, to acquire treasures left by heroic figures. Knowing the report, Cyan was concerned about Reiner and Ferris' safety. Claw soon arrived in Cheyenne's apartments, accompanied by the Queen of Estable. She volunteered as a prisoner of war to ensure that the people of Estable obeyed the Roland Kingdom. Cheyenne agreed, but he must continue to care for Queen now. Muran soon returned to Cyan's room and informed him that there was another risk. There is evidence that the Gastark Kingdom is expanding its territories. They are known for their cruelty, justifying any measures necessary to conquer a kingdom as an ally. He advised them to avoid attacks from the kingdom because he believes there will be anti-king nobles spy on the Rollin Kingdom's strength. Moran proposed that Cyan slaughter the aristocrats who had a high likelihood of betraying the Rollin Kingdom. Moran then met one of the nobles, the Duke. He openly confessed that he despised Cyan's leadership style. He also invited Moran to join him and be his confidant. Moran, however, rejected and sided with Cyan. Even though the noble offered a large sum of money, it was insufficient to secure his devotion. Claw accompanies Queen Nao to her room where she will rest for a time. However, after Claw leaves, she is abruptly accosted by a mystery organization. It forced her to strip naked. When Claw heard Queen Nao scream, he returned to her instantly. But when he arrived, he discovered her, who had been nearly raped. He was furious and swiftly slaughtered the gang of nasty individuals. That night, however, Ferris and Reiner were traveling in the center of the forest in quest of the hero's relics. On the way, they spotted a little girl being abused by men. Then they quickly executed him. But the problem wasn't solved because the small girl requested for their assistance in saving her companion, Arua, who had been brought by the soldiers. The small girl revealed that if Arua's eyes changed, she possessed a powerful ability to kill soldiers. She was detained because she was viewed as a monster. Ferris assumed that Arua had Alpha Stigma's eyes. After hearing it, they were finally willing to help her. While in the Roland Kingdom, Moran reports about the Queen Vestibule's death. Moran suspected that the attack was carried out by members of the nobility who wanted to make Cheyenne look bad in the eyes of the people of Estable because he was unable to protect his prisoners of war. Moran also proposed that Cheyenne slaughter all of the nobility and claimed to have plans to do it. Cheyenne, who was already annoyed by the nobles, enabled Moran to carry out his plan. Cheyenne will make Moran a suspect in the attack on the Queen of Estable, leading the other nobles to assume Moran betrayed him. The next day, the beginning stages of the plan to slaughter the aristocracy began. Cheyenne initially issued a written edict stating that the kingdom will henceforth employ the chosen people to work for him. This was done to rile up the nobles. Sure enough, the aristocrats were irritated by Cheyenne's decision to hire commoners throughout the kingdom. His subordinates went to his chamber to voice their worries because the situation was extremely perilous. After all, it could incite traitors to mutiny against him. Cheyenne understood their concerns, but now he was only concerned about the future of his kingdom. The Gastark Kingdom poses a threat as it expands its boundaries and has taken control of other kingdoms on the Menorous continent. They could attack the Roland Kingdom at any time. Cheyenne required his country to prepare for it. He also stated that he would openly slay any nobility who were going to betray the Roland Kingdom. He will carry out Moran's plan to trap and kill all of the aristocrats. Claw, upon hearing this, raised his reservations. If Cheyenne did this, he would be no different than the previous relatively harsh ruler. But he can't do anything when he learns why Cyan did it, to preserve the kingdom from destruction so that the people can live blissfully. Meanwhile, Ferris and Reiner were scouting the runic kingdom on the territory's outskirts. 
Arwa was actually taken by Runin, a squad of formidable wizard knights. Reiner observed her being carried and bound up inhumanly. They even kidnapped her parents, and her mother was tortured and executed in front of her. And it intends to activate the alpha stigma in her eyes. Reiner couldn't face the thought of having to aid her right away, but Ferris persuaded him to be patient. They needed to devise a strategy to save Arua. The magic knights then tortured Arua, threatening to kill her father. Reiner was unable to perceive their wickedness from that location. He arrived immediately and was unconcerned about his strength or number of foes. Reiner, who was completely reliant on his emotions, was nearly slain. Fortunately, Ferris guarded him. The knight army turned out to be massive. He directed Arua's father to take her out from there. Instead, they slaughtered Orwa's father in front of her. She couldn't help but become enraged and her Alpha Stigma eyes widened. Reiner was aware of the danger of Erua raising her Alpha Stigma, so she responded quickly and controlled her wrath. They instantly departed with her. They were lucky to escape the knight's pursuit. After resting and spending the night in the forest that morning, Ferris found a horse-drawn carriage to continue her journey. Meanwhile, in the Roland Kingdom, it appears that the nobles are congregating at the Froed noble family's home. Moran appears to be present as well. Moran's father is one of the lords that supports the anti-king group and encourages any national alliances that oppose Sion. It was then that he incited all of the nobles to topple Sion. They joined forces with the Runa kingdom to dethrone him. All the aristocrats there agreed and were very excited. Finally, Moran was instructed to transmit his father's plan, but Moran responded unexpectedly by simply saying, please kill and slaughter everyone there, including his father. Surprisingly, there is only one noble left the Duke. Finally, it is revealed that the struggle of Moran and the Duke brought all of Sion's opponents together here. Moran guarantees the Duke's safety if he joins his game. The Duke was unexpectedly ambushed and killed by a man who used the Shadow Ring technique. He stated that his intention in coming there was to steal a ring from Moran, but the two ended up fighting. Moran attempted to take magical power from the man in order to determine his origins. However, he simply employed the Shadow Element system and a blue fire crystal to kill Moran. Moran was besieged by fire and unable to escape. He believed he would die in this place. Fortunately, Claw came to his rescue and they fled the building. Claw then inquired as to what had actually occurred, but Moran had no idea, nor did he recognize the man's figure. He then thanked Claw for saving his life. It turns out that Cyan dispatched Claw to guard him. Suddenly, the man made another move. He goes to the palace to kill Cyan using sorcery that transforms him into an animal. But Lucille arrived and stopped him. Unfortunately, he was able to flee and discovered that there were so many strong people surrounding Cheyenne, so his objective to murder him failed. Meanwhile, the Sui siblings killed the whole army of the Runa Kingdom. Their goal was to persuade the King of Runa to join forces with the Gastark Kingdom to destroy the Roland Kingdom. They also requested that the monarch hand up Arua, who carried the Alpha Eye Stigma, to them. On the other hand, Ferris and Reiner are being pursued by Runa's forces, who are looking for Arua. They also ran as fast as they could to get her to a safer location so she wouldn't be pursued by others again. On the other side, it appears Kiefer is in Estolia. She wished to return to the Roland Kingdom. The lesson of this anime is that sometimes, in order to keep a group's peace, we are unwittingly willing to destroy another group. As a result, being impartial will be difficult because we will be heavily biased toward one side. This is the end of Densetsu no You Should Know Densetsu. Thank you so much for staying in this channel and watching our videos. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can keep you updated with our latest contents. See you in the next video.